Okay, boys, I think we're done for now. I'm quite disappointed. Neither of you yet possess the necessary speed. You two are still thinking before you move, rather than just moving. I'm afraid this habit is especially strong with you, Vegeta. This overthinking is limiting your fighting speed. <laughs> Messages can only travel through your nervous system so fast. When you rely on thoughts for physical action, you lose precious fighting time. <laughs> Your end goal should be to master the ability to have each part of your body think and move independently of the other parts. But I admit this is exceedingly difficult. In fact, not even Lord Beerus has mastered it, and he's a god. So, allow me to take you through every step of the training required in a most meticulous fashion. You mean your body reacts without you having to think? That's exactly right. Several months had passed since the training on Beerus' planet, and Vegeta was growing impatient and frustrated. He was happy to be with his family, but he knew he couldn't remain idle for too long. After all, Frieza could attack at any moment, and who knew when a new tournament of power might be announced again. So, after discussing it with his wife Bulma, Vegeta decided to resume his training. Vegeta went to Goku's house to invite him to train, but Vegeta was surprised by Goku's response. Goku wanted to stay a little longer with his family, especially with his granddaughter Pan. He also mentioned that he had to visit a young and promising warrior to train him, so this time, Vegeta would have to train alone. Of course, that wouldn't be a problem for the proud prince of the Saiyans. Vegeta had always trained on his own, but these last few years of training with Goku, Whis, and the God of Destruction Beerus had made Vegeta accustomed to training with others. Why don't you continue training with Broly? Goku suggested. Vegeta replied, no. Broly should train with Gohan, their abilities are similar. You noticed that during the last training session, or have you forgotten already, you idiot? Smiling, Goku responded, you're right, Vegeta. Vegeta then headed to Beerus' planet to see if there was something he had yet to learn that Whis or the God of Destruction could teach him. Beerus' Planet Vegeta finally arrived on Beerus' planet using instant transmission and quickly found Whis, who listened to Vegeta's requests for something more he could learn from the angel. Well, there are new techniques and abilities that I can teach you, Vegeta. But for now, you lack the necessary power to master such techniques. You must reach a new level of power. You've grown very strong, but if you want to surpass Goku and Lord Beerus, you need to control what you do best. You can surpass Goku. I've told you this in the past, but you need to control your energy. It seems you've forgotten everything you went through to get here, Whis responded. Vegeta then asked, I don't understand where you're going with all this talk. I've already developed Ultra Ego, so what do I need to become even stronger? Whis replied, you Saiyans can be so dense sometimes. Let me explain. Indeed, you've grown stronger. You trained with me and achieved Super Saiyan God. You trained with Lord Beerus and developed Ultra Ego, and you even trained with the Yard Rats. But you've forgotten a detail that you yourself realized. Curious, Vegeta asked, what detail? What realization did I come to? Whis then responded, you and Goku fought against Jiren in the Tournament of Power. There, you finally began to understand the concept of Ultra Instinct that I mentioned in the past. When we brought Broly here and started the training, you mentioned that there was a difference between you and Jiren. Suddenly, a memory flashed through Vegeta's mind. He began to recall his conversation with Goku about Jiren's fighting style. そして、Yes, I remember. Vegeta responded. Whis then said, Exactly, that's the path. You realized on your own that it wasn't just strength and power that made Jiren so powerful. Jiren had cunning, calmness, and the ability to fight without recklessly burning through stamina. You have the power, you have the endurance, and you possess calmness. After all, you train with the Yard Rats. This is my final hint for you, Vegeta. Understand these concepts, and you might surpass Goku and perhaps even surpass Lord Beerus in the future. Vegeta was deep in thought, 
trying to piece together all this information, but in the end, he couldn't find a solution to solve this dilemma. However, Wiss's voice pulled Vegeta out of his thoughts. Wiss spoke, okay, I'll help you, but this will be very dangerous. Vegeta then asked, stop stalling, just tell me what I have to do. Wiss replied, well, there is a place where a special race of demon witches and warlocks with vampiric powers developed and bred over the centuries. This place is called the Mystic Planet. Nothing that happens there is actually what it seems. That's why the planet has become nearly uninhabitable, and only those with the magical abilities of that ancient people live there. In that place, destructive power will be irrelevant if you don't have the mental strength to resolve your own internal conflicts. I can send you there, but the responsibility is all yours. What do you say, Vegeta? Well, if that's the only way to find the answer to get stronger, then I accept this challenge. Alright, then get ready, and remember, you'll be on your own, Wiss replied with a mysterious tone. Wiss then searched for the mystic planet in his staff, and as soon as he found it, he sent Vegeta there. Mystic Planet. As he set foot on that planet, Vegeta saw in the distance a grand imperial city. Everything on that planet reminded him of his home planet, Planet Vegeta. This is all very strange, Vegeta thought. I hope. Hello, Prince, finally you've returned, Prince Vegeta. We've all missed you, said a sweet female voice. It was a beautiful Saiyan woman. Vegeta then asked, who are you? Don't you remember me? I'm your wife. The woman replied. Furious, Vegeta responded, My wife? You must be joking. My wife is an earthling, Bulma. Humiliated, the Saiyan woman then said, You're cheating on me? Then you must die. Vegeta was struck by a powerful attack that left him dazed, but as the smoke cleared, Vegeta saw something that stunned him. It was his wife, Bulma, much younger, apparently 20 years old. Shocked, Vegeta said, Bulma, what are you doing here? What happened to you? Did you ask Shinran to make you even younger? Bulma replied, Dear, I've waited so long for you. I was lost. Wiss sent me to save you. Come, let's go. Vegeta was utterly shocked to see his wife in a place like that. But something about this story didn't make sense, something was out of place, but Vegeta couldn't figure out what was happening. Vegeta had been under the control of the witch Mahamba since he arrived on the mystic planet and now she was controlling him by using his deepest emotions. Mystic Planet Vegeta was shocked by everything he was seeing, none of it made any sense. Planet Vegeta had been destroyed by Frieza many years ago, and his wife couldn't possibly be there. Everything was very surreal and abnormally magnificent, However, Vegeta started feeling weaker and more exhausted. And as his energy drained, Vegeta saw in front of him that young and beautiful girl with his wife's face. It was as if Bulma were a young woman again. She kept saying that Vegeta was about to become king, that Trunks would be a prince, Bulla would be a princess, and that they would all live well under his reign. It was time for Vegeta to take the position that was rightfully his, it was time for Vegeta to be king. Bulma said that Goku had already been surpassed by Vegeta, who had also taken Frieza's life. Even tired and weak, Vegeta felt happy, he felt like he had finally achieved his life's goal. That's right, just a little more, and I'll have drained all your energy, foolish Saiyan, thought the witch Mahamba. Bulma said, come, dear, it's time to rest, you can sleep now. Vegeta replied, yes, my love, I will. Suddenly, the Saiyan instinct made Vegeta's blood boil, as if a natural alert sounded within him. Wait a minute, if Trunks is fine, why can't I sense his key? And Goku and his sons? And the other Saiyans? And my daughter Bulla? Vegeta then awakened, emanating an enormous amount of key from his body, which sent the witch Mahamba flying. Looking around, Vegeta saw that he was in a dark, destroyed place. I see, you're that vampire witch who drains people's energy and invades their minds, aren't you? Mahamba replied, damn, that was close. Just a few more minutes, and you'd have been finished. You people should be more welcoming and considerate of visitors to this planet. 
That way, it might actually develop, and you wouldn't live such a miserable life. You'll always be waiting for a ship or someone ignorant enough to land on this planet so you can feed. Furious, Mahamba spoke, you know nothing about us. We were cursed long ago when Frieza tried to colonize us. He invaded this planet, but since this place was always barren and lifeless, he decided to destroy everything we had. Frieza destroyed the magic crystal in our capital, a crystal that had the power to turn a bad environment into a beautiful place. The air, the waters, the forests, and even the animals lived on this planet, but Frieza destroyed it and decided not to use our planet for his trade. Thus, we were ignored by the entire galaxy, and no one comes near this place. He practically took away our right to live. And so, many of us began losing our lives and the only solution was to feed on the vital energy of others. There aren't many of us left, but when I felt your powerful energy appear in this corner of the planet, I thought I could absorb it to create a new crystal and thus save what's left of us. Vegeta remained silent for a moment, absorbing the information he had just heard. He felt pity for what had happened on that planet, especially after learning that Frieza was the one responsible, the same cursed enemy who had done all that to his people and his planet as well. But then Vegeta began to sense various energies coming from different parts of the planet, it was clear that Mahamba had contacted her friends about what had happened. Vegeta then remembered Wiss's words about controlling his own energy and using the power of Ultra Ego in conjunction with everything he had learned from the Yard Rats in his fight with Jiren. He needed to let his destructive powers emanate in a way that his body didn't act fully. He had to find balance, and Vegeta understood, he finally understood that he could do it. The witch had trapped him and drained his energy, but by staying calm, he managed to react, if he had been angry, he could have died. However, while Vegeta was deep in thought, Mahamba attacked him. But Vegeta managed to react in time and grabbed her by the hair. All this without even opening his eyes, when Vegeta opened his eyes, he realized he was different, Vegeta had unlocked a new transformation. Mahamba transformed back into Bulma to try to deceive Vegeta, but the Saiyan calmly said. I don't want to have to hurt you or your friends, so stop these illusion games, or I'll have to use all my power against you. Mahambo was surprised by Vegeta's attitude. You want my power to create your new crystal? Fine. You can use my powers, but promise that you won't attack the people who land on this planet. And as for Frieza, I'll take care of that miserable one myself, for what he did here and for what he did to planet Vegeta. Mahambo was moved and thanked the merciful prince. After absorbing a good amount of Vegeta's energy, Mahamba infused it into a crystal that would later be placed in the capital of that planet. You would make a great king. Our people need a new king, why not stay on this planet and take that position, said Mahamba, emotional. Because I'm already the king of my family, said Vegeta before disappearing using instant transmission. Beerus Planet. Vegeta returned to report the events to Wiss, but the angel said he had seen everything that had happened, especially inside Vegeta's heart at that moment when his emotions led him to the right path and the right choice. And what did you see, Wiss? asked Vegeta. Wiss then replied, I saw your true inner self, the one no one knows. Vegeta then began to remember his past and how Bulma had changed all that. Now I think I'm ready for the next challenge, Wiss, said Vegeta. Wiss then responded, prepare yourself, because Goku is waiting for you. After all, Frieza attacked Earth. Vegeta has finally reached a new level of power, a new transformation, but while he was training, Frieza attacked Earth. Beerus Planet. Vegeta was furious. And his fury grew more and more with each word Wiss spoke about what had happened on Earth. Wiss revealed to Vegeta that shortly after Saiyan had left for the mystical planet, Goku had arrived on Beerus Planet to train. It seemed that Goku had sensed that something very strange was about to happen. Wiss then revealed that he asked Goku to try to mix Ultra Instinct with Kaioken, since both are techniques that work in opposite ways. However, Wiss asked Goku to go train on Earth since Beerus would soon wake up and therefore he would not have time to train him. Wiss also told Vegeta that he sent Broly to Earth to train with Gohan during that same period, so the angel revealed that Vegeta had stayed for a week on the mystical planet and it was in the middle of that period that Frieza attacked Earth. Goku, who was training in the hyperbolic time chamber, didn't know anything about what was happening, so Gohan, Broly, and the others went to stop Frieza's attack, 
but as expected, Frieza was much stronger. Whis then revealed that the warriors were able to annihilate Frieza's army, but the Emperor of the Universe was unbeatable. Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo were killed first. Gohan and Broly almost managed to defeat him, but they left Frieza in a complicated situation, but Frieza defeated both of them because Gohan and Broly hadn't mastered their transformations and were thus defeated. Frieza then left but promised that he would return in three days to finish his dream of annihilating the Saiyan race completely. Furious, Vegeta then asked, What about my wife and daughter? What about Kakarot and Gohan's wife? Why didn't you and Lord Beerus intervene in this massacre? Whis replied, I thought about waking up Lord Beerus so he could intervene, but he had already made it very clear that he would not intervene. After all, Frieza's resurrection only happened because of the agreement made to collaborate with us in the Tournament of Power. So Lord Beerus made it very clear that if Frieza did anything, it would be you who would put an end to him. As for the other people, well, it seems they are fine. Since Gohan and Broly left Frieza exhausted, he had to quickly flee, he was probably afraid that you and Goku would suddenly appear. Vegeta then said, so you mean he knew that Kakarot and I weren't there? That's why that worm attacked Earth, he knew that if we were all together, he wouldn't win. Whis replied, probably. But I must warn you, Vegeta. Frieza is no fool. As you already know, he found a place similar to the hyperbolic time chamber to train, recover, and come back even stronger. He's probably already recovered and trained to become even stronger. There are two days left for this fight, and in 48 hours Goku will finish his training. So let's bring all your friends and family who survived here, and we'll also bring all the Dragon Balls as well. I've already located each one of them and I'll get them one by one. That way, you and Goku will be able to face Frieza and even if the Earth is destroyed we can fix everything using the Dragon Balls. I'm already interfering too much by training you and helping you save the Earth, it's time to settle the score with Frieza by yourselves. Seriously, Vegeta then replied, you're right. I'm going to rest and eat something because I'm exhausted and tomorrow I'll meet Kakarot on Earth. I have to talk to him before the fight against Frieza. Vegeta was furious. His Saiyan blood had never boiled like it did now, it was time for revenge. Planet Earth, one day later. The preparations for the final battle were ready. As promised, Whis took Goku and Vegeta's friends and family to Beerus Planet and gathered all seven Dragon Balls while Vegeta headed to Earth to meet Goku, who would finish his training that night. As soon as Goku finished his training, Vegeta explained everything that had happened. Goku was furious and took the blame for what had happened, after all, he was the one who helped Frieza be revived again. Goku then said, Forgive me Vegeta, I never imagined things would get to this point. I promise that this time we will finish Frieza, and if you want to kill him I will not stand in your way anymore. Vegeta then replied, Understand Kakarot, we have been through a lot together, we were once enemies and today we are allies, but Frieza cannot change, he will never stop being that disgusting guy. I did things that haunt my memory to this day, but I found myself. However, I cannot do things like you, I cannot ask for Frieza to be reborn as a kind-hearted being in the future. This is our people's revenge. Kakarot. But beyond that, it is Universe 7's revenge against Frieza. So I ask you for the second and last time, let's avenge the Saiyans once and for all. Excitedly, Goku replied, you're right, Vegeta. Let's end Frieza once and for all. The dawn passed quickly and the sun rose, the day of the final battle had arrived. Goku and Vegeta waited for Frieza to appear at the lookout. The afternoon came as quickly as the night until finally Frieza's key was felt by the two Saiyans. Frieza had landed in the same place where he first appeared when he stepped on Earth when he was sliced by trunks in the past. In this way, Goku and Vegeta teleported to the place and finally met Frieza. Frieza said, have the two little mice finally come out of their hole? Goku replies, today will be your end, Frieza. Vegeta says, Kakarot, get ready. We'll only beat you if we use everything we've got. Let's fight with the maximum of our powers. Vegeta and Goku transform into Vegeta's surprise. Goku was also able to reach the supreme level like him. You never cease to amaze me, Kakarot. Even when I think I've surpassed you, you show me that you're one step ahead of me. However, this time it seems that our powers are finally equal. Frieza then said, Damn Saiyans. That's why I tried to eliminate you, you keep evolving, improving, and getting stronger. 
but this time everything will be different. Frieza assumes his black form and goes after Goku and Vegeta. The clash between them generates overwhelming impacts that make the earth start to shake. The speed at which the three fight in the air is so absurd that it is practically impossible to keep up with them. Goku and Vegeta combine the Kamehameha with the final flash and fire it at Frieza who retaliates with a powerful key blast. The clash between their powers causes a huge explosion. Vegeta then says, at this rate the earth will be destroyed before we defeat this worm. Goku answers, yes, we have to defeat him before that happens. I have a plan, Vegeta. Let's use fusion. Vegeta then answers, did you bring the earrings? Goku replied, yes. I have them right here, get Vegeta. Goku threw the Patara earring at Vegeta, but something surprising happened. Frieza fired a super fast laser that hit the earring and destroyed it in midair. You didn't think I would allow you to fuse, did you? Frieza said in a mocking tone. Vegeta said, damn it, Kakarot, why didn't you give me that earring before, you idiot? Goku then replied, sorry Vegeta, I was so excited about the fight that I ended up forgetting and but with the chatter, you bastards. Enough joking around, I'm going to put an end to you. Receive my most powerful attack. Frieza said, raising a finger upward. Frieza was accumulating all his ki in a supernova, he was clearly willing to repeat the same feat that occurred on planet Vegeta. Vegeta then said, Kakarot, let's fuse with that ridiculous dance, it's the only way. Goku replied, but Vegeta, Besides not only lasting a short time, if we get the dance steps wrong, the fusion could fail and it would be our end. Are you sure about that? Confident, Vegeta replied, it's our only chance. If it works, we'll attack him with a single blow, using all our power. While Frieza gathers all his power in his supernova, Vegeta and Goku fuse. Frieza says, pathetic. Even if they succeed, it won't make a difference. This is my ultimate attack. I'll blow up the earth and that way you won't be able to survive in space. It's the end. Frieza was confident in his victory, but a glimmer of hope appeared after Vegeta and Goku finished the dance steps. Ultra Gogeta was finally born. Amazed, Frieza says, damn them, they did it. But it doesn't matter, I'll blow everything up and there won't be anything left. Gogeta looked up with an imposing look, his aura exuding confidence and power. He then says, for everything you did in Universe 7, for your evil deeds to various types of people, for what you did to the Saiyans. Frieza, this is your end. Final Kamehameha. An absurdly powerful blast hit Frieza who launched his supernova, but it was no use, Ultra Gogeta's attack pushed the supernova back towards Frieza who tried at all costs to blow up the earth. Frustrated, Frieza says, it's not possible. I lost to those damn Saiyans again, it's not possible. Frieza received the full attack of his own supernova combined with Gogeta's final Kamehameha and exploded in the ends of the universe, it was the end of the evil emperor. A few days later. As promised, everyone was revived, and Goku and Vegeta returned to Earth with their families and friends, peace reigned again in Universe 7, at least for now. Earth, Goku's house. Everything was fine. Goku was enjoying his days with his family, just as Vegeta and Gohan were with their respective families. From time to time, Whis and Beerus would come to Earth to visit, and during these visits, the angel would ask Goku and Vegeta if it wasn't time for them to resume training. However, this time, Goku and Vegeta were at peace, and they wanted to stay on Earth and rest. Goku revealed to Whis that he would only train again when a new enemy appeared. He also said that in a few years he would have to train a boy who was the reincarnation of the evil Boo that he defeated a while ago. So the days went by until an unusual visit happened. This time it was an Angel Wiss who came to visit Goku, but rather his sister, Angel Vados, along with the God of Destruction Shimpa. Hello Goku, first I would like to congratulate you for defeating Frieza, that was quite an achievement. Said Vados. Goku replied. As much as I wanted to believe that even he could change, Frieza would never change, he would always be an evil guy. Vados then said, I understand, there are things we have to do even for the greater good, even if it is something that goes against our will. But I am not here to talk about Frieza, I came to talk about Kalifla, the Saiyan woman from my universe. At that moment, Chi Chi, Goku's wife looked at Vados with a piercing and tormenting look. Furious, Chi Chi asked, 
Goku, who is this Saiyan woman? Who is Kalifla? What does she want with you, Goku? Ashamed, Goku replied, Calm down Chi Chi, she is just a girl from Universe 6 who is also a Saiyan like me. Universe 6 is like a mirror of our universe, which in this case is Universe 7. So there are Saiyans there too, but unlike my father or Vegeta's father, the Saiyans from Universe 6 evolved in a more peaceful way. But I don't know what she wants with me. Vados then said, she said you made her a promise in a tournament of power. Pensive, Goku replied, promise? I don't remember making any promise to that girl. Seeing all this confusion, Shimpa, who was already getting bored and hungry, shouted. Look here Goku, I don't know what you promised that chatty girl, but regardless of what your promise was, you're going to keep it, because that girl is making my life hell. Every time she comes to my castle to ask us to take you to Universe 6, so let's go to Universe 6 right away to end this matter once and for all. And you can rest assured that I've already warned Whis and Beerus about this. Goku replied, Alright, I'm going to see what that girl wants with me. Let's go. Goku then left with Vados and Shimpa for Universe 6 to find out what Kalifla wanted to talk to Universe 7 Saiyan about. Universe 6, Planet Sadala. Goku was taken to Kalifla, who welcomed him with a huge smile on her face. Happy, Kalifla said, old man, you finally came. Yes, I'm here. But what do you want with me, girl? Goku replied. Furious, Kalifla replied, have you forgotten? You must be getting really old. You said you were going to teach me the Super Saiyan 3 and Super Saiyan Blue transformations. Finally, Goku began to remember his promise. Goku then said, I'm sorry, I completely forgot. Vado said, So that was the promise? Why didn't you tell me before? Kalifla then replied, because I thought that maybe you and Lord Shimpa wouldn't allow Goku to come here just to train. Vados replied, indeed, because universes shouldn't interfere with others. But it seems that my father already knew, because when I went to talk to him about Goku coming to Universe 6, he gave me permission. Anyway, I'm going to Lord Shimpa's castle, good training. Vados then disappeared while Goku and Kalifla stayed to start training. Kalifla said, okay. Teach me Super Saiyan 3, and then Super Saiyan Blue. Goku then replied, Well, things are not that simple. Forget Super Saiyan 3, this transformation is not worth learning. Not even Vegeta wanted to learn this transformation. This transformation consumes a lot of energy, let's focus on Super Saiyan Blue. Goku then explained the concept of Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue. He asked the girl why she didn't train with Angel Vados since that was how he and Vegeta managed to reach Super Saiyan Blue through Divine Ki. The girl then said that Vados and Shimpa are different from Whis and Beerus, they don't care about the Saiyans because there are warriors more powerful than them in Universe 6. Goku then began to teach about the concept of Divine Ki and how it worked. And just like it was with him and Vegeta during their training with Whis, Goku taught the girl how to channel and maintain Divine Ki within her body. The days went by until the girl finally managed to activate Super Saiyan God and consequently Super Saiyan Blue, surprising Goku. Happy, Kalifla said, finally, I finally did it. Thanks old man. In the background, Kale and Kaba watched Kalifla's entire training journey. Kaba said, Kale, I want to train too, I also want to learn Super Saiyan Blue and you must also learn to control your berserker form. Kale then replied, and how are we going to do that? Are we going to train with Goku too? Kaba replied, I'm going to ask to train with Lord Vegeta and we have to find someone to train with you. Planet Sadala After successfully transforming into Super Saiyan Blue, Goku and Kalifla trained together for a while longer. Kaba and Kale just watched their friends training until, in a moment of rest, they both went to Goku to ask him to train them too. Goku then said, Well, in your case, Kaba, I think it's better for you to train with Vegeta, especially since he's already your master. Kaba replied, yes, but Lord Vegeta must be busy right now. I heard about your legendary feats alongside Lord Vegeta, 
but I think he wants to be with his family now. Goku replied, although you're right, Vegeta must be eager to start training again, and training with you might be a good idea since Trunks and Goten are working together as heroes, and I'm here, so he might want to train with you. Kalafla interrupted saying, but what about Broly? Why doesn't Vegeta train with him? Goku replied, it's amazing how well informed you guys are about our universe, isn't it? But anyway, Broly is special, he has a problem with anger and emotions, just like my son Gohan had in the past, so I suggested that they train together so Gohan could help him. And thinking about that, it would be a good idea if Kale trained with them too, Broly has the same kind of power as Kale, that way Gohan could be her and Broly's master, what do you think of that idea? Kalafla replied, I thought it was amazing. Kaba said, me too, and you Kale? Kale, yes. I accept the proposal. Smiling, Goku then said, I had forgotten that in her normal form this girl is very shy. Okay, it's settled. Kaba, Kale, and Kalafla take Goku to the God of Destruction Shimpa's castle to discuss Kale and Kaba's training with the Saiyans of Universe 7. Vados then spoke to Whis and Beerus through the magic staff and then contacted Vegeta, who accepted the proposal. However, in order not to leave Earth unprotected, Kaba and Vegeta will train on Earth. Kaba was then sent directly to Capsule Corporation while Kale would be sent to Beerus Planet. After eating and resting, Goku and Kalafla went to train again, but this time Goku questioned the girl about why in that universe the Saiyan were not trained like in Universe 7. Kalafla then replied that they had been taught that the Saiyans of Universe 7 were primitive and violent since time immemorial and that was why the Saiyans of Universe 6 were different, more docile and calm. However, the girl always believed that all of this was nothing more than an excuse to keep them under control. Even if the Saiyans in Universe 7 were primitive and therefore should be extinct, this could not be used as an argument for the Saiyans of Universe 6, they are different people. And for Kalafla, all of this was confirmed in the Tournament of Power, where she met Goku, Vegeta, and the others. So for the young Saiyan girl, it was possible for her and her friends to evolve without becoming true monsters who wanted to destroy everything and everyone. Goku felt a tightness in his throat because he knew the girl was right. Goku then began to remember the past. He remembered that he was responsible for the death of his grandfather. He remembered his brother's cold words. He remembered that Frieza wanted to annihilate all the Saiyans for fear that a Saiyan would surpass him in the future. At the same time that he was a monster, Goku was also a peaceful being. Luck or chance made him that way, but if Bardock changed, if Vegeta changed, if Yamoshi was different even in the midst of so many evil Saiyans, all of this means that nothing is definitive. Goku then said, you're right, girl. We decide our own path, I think so too. Look, I'm going to show you something special. You and the others heard about how Vegeta and I defeated Frieza, right? But you only heard and didn't see it with your own eyes, right? Well, I'm going to show you the power I've managed to achieve currently, the power that surpasses the power of Super Saiyan Blue with Kaioken and that also surpasses Ultra Instinct. I call this transformation Super Saiyan Orange Level 1, I usually call it Supreme Super Saiyan 2, but there's the ultimate level, said Goku as he transformed. Goku then accumulated an absurd amount of energy and activated the ultimate Supreme Super Saiyan. Goku then said, this is the final form of Supreme Super Saiyan, who knows one day I'll teach you how to reach this level of power. But only when you've reached Ultra Instinct. Kalafla was amazed, seeing all that power was surreal. Goku looked like a god. However, above them, in a completely hidden way, Vados and Shimpa just watched them. So that's what Goku and Vegeta are capable of doing now? Vado said. Shimpa then replied, that could be a problem for us, let's call that guy, if he's not strong enough to surpass Goku then we have to change our plans. Vados replied, of course. Planet Sadala. Goku and Kalafla continued talking about Goku's new transformation and this made the girl more and more excited to learn this transformation. Kalafla then said, incredible, this transformation emanates the most powerful energy I have ever felt in my entire life. Goku replied, well, now that you control divine ki, you will be able to feel the powers of the gods and angels, although they have the ability to control and even hide all the energy they possess. When I fought Lord Beerus for the first time I had no idea of the magnitude of his powers, 
but when I managed to reach Super Saiyan God I understood that his power level was far above mine. And to think that I tried to face him using Super Saiyan 3. Goku then remembered his first fight against Beerus. That was crazy, I had no idea how powerful a god of destruction was. Goku concluded. However, for a brief moment, Goku felt something different in the air. Who's there? Goku exclaimed. Caulifla then asked, there's no one here, Goku. You really are an old man, you're going crazy. Up in the sky, Vados and Shimpa were surprised by what had happened. Vados said, impossible, he managed to sense our presence? Shimpa replied. And the most incredible thing about this is that he did it even in his normal form. Whis and Beerus will regret giving this Saiyan the ability to use Divine Key, that's why Kamoshi had to die even though he was a kind Saiyan. The Saiyan Zenkai together with Divine Power could be an unstoppable threat in the near future. Vados then said, Exactly, I'm afraid that my father and Zenosama are being too frivolous with the Saiyans, this could get out of control. Let's talk to Daishinkan. Shimpa said, Alright, Let's go! Vados and Shimpa go to Zenosama's palace to meet with Daishinkan to deliver information about Goku's new powers. Universe 7, Beerus Planet. On Beerus Planet, Kale and Broly learn from Gohan how to control their instincts and especially their fears. Only in this way could they achieve the stability to keep the Berserker form fully activated without losing their reason and consciousness. Gohan then said, Alright, you two are doing great. In a short time you will perfectly control the power of the legendary Saiyan. Now, let's get back to training. Kale and Broly needed more time, but they were both already making good progress in their training. Earth. Meanwhile at Capsule Corporation, Kaba surprised his master Vegeta by demonstrating an absurdly high learning capacity. It's incredible, you mastered Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan Blue evolved with perfection and mastery. Vegeta said, surprised by what he was seeing. Happy, Kaba asked, thank you master, but what's the next step? Ultra Instinct? How cool! I can't wait to learn how to use this ability I've heard so much about. With a serious look, Vegeta answers, Ultra Instinct? No, I'm going to teach you something different that will take you to the same potential that Kakarot and I currently reach. But I can't do it via Ultra Instinct. Kaba then asked, so how are we going to do this, master? Vegeta then explained to Kaba how Goku reached the same level as him by combining Ultra Instinct with Kaioken, but since Vegeta didn't know how to use both techniques, he had to do everything his own way. He then revealed to Kaba everything he had learned from the Yard Rats and the God of Destruction Beerus. First, he taught all the concepts of spirit control, which gave the user the ability to better control and sense their own energy and that of others. Thus, Vegeta explained that he was able to use instant transmission and forced spirit mission. In this way, Vegeta had better control over himself and the energy around him, making him calmer and more assertive in his movements. After explaining this, Vegeta also explained about Ultra Ego, the transformation he developed with Beerus that was practically the opposite of everything he had learned from the Yard Rats. This time, Vegeta said that he had to control the powers of Hakai within himself by accepting his Saiyan nature and his pride. Without hesitation, without fear, just surrendering to the fight. Vegeta explained that this way he could attack without fear, because all the damage he receives makes him even stronger to continue fighting. Vegeta concluded by saying that this was how he achieved what is called the Supreme Transformation or Super Saiyan Orange. He combined the two concepts learned from the Yard Rats and Beerus, just as Goku combined Kaioken with Ultra Instinct. Two abilities that are opposite to each other, but if a balance is found between them, a new power will emerge. Kaba then replied, right, I finally get it. Vegeta then said, okay, let's get started. The training was arduous, but Vegeta managed to teach the young Saiyan everything he knew. Kaba quickly learned to use all the skills, the boy was a true prodigy. And after a month, he finally succeeded, Kaba was the third Saiyan to reach the level of Super Saiyan Orange. Vegeta just watched him proudly for a long time until he finally spoke. You're an amazing boy. I hope my son will be as strong as you one day. Kaba then replied, 
It's because I have you as a master, that's why I can go so far. While Vegeta and Kaba celebrated the boy's achievement, in the palace of Zenosama Daishinkan, Vados and Shimpa were talking. Zenosama's Palace Since time passes in a completely different way from the time that passes within each universe, I can see everything that happens almost simultaneously. From what I can see, the Saiyans are becoming much more powerful. But I don't see why you still fear them. It must be because you are weak, that's why some universes didn't participate in the Tournament of Power. If you can't deal with the people within your own universes, that means that perhaps you deserve to be erased. Daishinkan said in a somber tone of voice. Vados then replied, Please, Daddy, don't judge us that way, we are trying to maintain better control within our universe. The other universes don't have a race like the Saiyans that are always evolving, so it's easier for them to deal with the balance of their universe but ours is different. Daishinkan then asked, so what do you suggest? Shimpa then replied, I'll call that guy to deal with Goku, if he's not able to face him, then I'll deal with the Saiyans of our universe myself. Daishinkan then replied, okay, do as you wish, but remember, if Goku is killed in your universe, Whis and Beerus might not like it, so think carefully before acting. Shimpa replied, I already gave the order for that guy not to take Goku's life. I said he should just leave him incapacitated. Daishinkan replied, Okay, now go back to your universe, I need to deal with other more important matters. Vados and Shimpa then left for Universe 6, where something incredible was about to happen. Universe 6 I've spent too much time in this place, it's time to go to Planet Sadala to pay a visit to the Saiyans, especially to that unwanted visitor. Okay, I think it's time to put an end to Goku. Said a mysterious voice. Shimpa and Vados reveal part of their plan, the Saiyans of Universe 6 and Goku are at risk of death, what will be the outcome of this story? Xenosama's Palace Things are getting interesting. Now that the Saiyans of Universes 6 and 7 are getting more powerful, maybe it's time to hold another tournament of power. Maybe it's the perfect time to have some fun. Xenosama said excitedly. Daishinkan then replied, I don't think that's possible, my lord. The universes that didn't participate in the Tournament of Power are satisfied with how things ended. They did their job of controlling each of their own universes. The ones who are failing in this are the other universes, especially universes 6 and 7. So I don't think we should hold another Tournament of Power. Furious, Xenosama replied, Are you challenging my authority, Daishinkan? Don't forget that you are only here before my greatness because of what I did to the Mother of Angels and the God of Destruction of Universe Zero. Your greed and arrogance brought you here, so don't tell me how I can have fun. Please forgive me, my lord. I didn't mean to defy your orders. But I believe that a new tournament of power with all the universes could create a huge imbalance, if you'll allow me to say so. I believe that Universe 6 and Universe 7 should face each other again but this time one of them should be erased once and for all, Daishinkan replied fearfully. Xenosama then replied, Interesting, that could be even more fun. Well, we'll see how the clash between Goku and the warrior sent by Shimpa will be. Goku is a fun guy, I want to see what he's capable of, after all, he finished off Frieza. Daishinkan replied, Okay, my lord. After finishing his conversation with Xenosama, Daishinkan met with Wiss outside the palace. It's incredible how someone so powerful can be so stupid. Wiss said. Daishinkan then replied, All of this is thanks to my concealment magic that is all over this place, convincing that idiot of this was more work than I imagined, but it gave us an advantage. Did you hear everything he said? Do you understand now why I had to do all that? Wiss replied, Yes, hearing everything from Xenosama's mouth made me understand. He's a monster. So does that mean that Mommy really is in Universe Zero with the God of Destruction? Daishinkan replied, Exactly, my son. Without a doubt, you are my smartest son. Unlike Vados, that fool eliminated the goddess Saiyan Kamoshi, which made the Saiyans of Universe 6 never evolve, but thanks to you, everything is changing, soon we will have our revenge against Zeno. Wis then said, Wouldn't it be easier to reveal the truth to her and Shimpa? Daishinkan replied, No. Only you should know. If your other brothers knew the truth, it could raise suspicions. Do you regret supporting Zeno instead of Zalama, Dad? Wiss asked. Daishinkan then replied, Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Zalama was just as dangerous as Zeno, in the end, 
we would have been used either way. Damn them, when they both arrived in this reality they decided to take over everything and made me choose between my dear wife or my children. I had to keep your mother hidden for all these millennia. Of course, to make Zeno trust me I had to support him against Salama and then pretended to betray his mother when there was only one universe, Universe Zero. But Zeno's lust for power could be his downfall. The Saiyans are the key to our victory. Wis then asked, that's why you always wanted me and my sister to evolve the Saiyans, to join forces with them in the future, am I right? Daishinkan then replied, exactly. Although we are powerful, our powers have a limit, and when Zeno created the other universes from his own powers, he made some races inherit part of that power, the Saiyans inherited the infinite evolutionary power that Zeno possesses. However, Zeno is standing still now, he trusts so fully in his powers that he doesn't even consider that he can be surpassed one day. But anyway, have you heard anything about Frieza's true plans? Well, it seems he offered an alliance to the four universes that didn't participate in the Tournament of Power. Just like us, Frieza wanted to overthrow Zeno from his throne, but coming from him I imagine he would be just another crazy person thirsty for power. That's why I called this conversation with you, my father. Wiss replied. Confused, Daishinkan asked, and what happened? Wiss then replied, it seems that Frieza developed something that could end the Saiyans. Bulma sent me a message saying that Vegeta fainted due to chest pains during training with Kaba and the same thing happened to Broly on Lord Beerus' planet. It seems that the poison only affected the Saiyans that are pure since Gohan didn't have any similar reaction. Daishinkan then said, this is a huge problem. This could ruin our plans, damn Frieza, he was one step ahead of us all along. I fear for Goku's life, go to Universe 6 immediately before it's too late, Goku's life is in danger. After finding him, take him to the special dimension of your staff. Take Vegeta and Broly too, everything they could do training the Saiyans of Universe 6 and defeating Frieza was a great help, but if they die now everything will be lost. Wiss replied, alright, I'll leave right now. Wiss disappeared using his teleportation. Universe 6, Planet Sadala while Wiss was traveling at full speed to Universe 6, Goku and Cauliflow were about to be surprised by the warriors sent by Shampa and Vados. Hello, Goku, long time no see. Said the mysterious man. Cauliflow replied, Hey, who are you? Know that we are training here, go away because we have no alms to give today, if you need help go to the church in the capital, it is close to King Sadala's castle. So the little girl thinks that just because she got a little stronger means she can say whatever she wants? Replied the mysterious man. Goku then said, Kalafla, I feel an enormous power coming from this guy, you better be careful. However, this power is not strange to me, I have felt this key before. Wait a minute, you are. That's right, I am hit. Said the mysterious man as he revealed himself. Smiling, Goku said, that's great. It's been a while since we've seen each other, how are you? Suddenly time stopped and when it came back, Cauliflow was unconscious on the floor. Hit then said, okay, that way she won't get in the way of our fight, Goku. Goku then asked, wait a minute, what are you doing? Isn't she your ally? I thought everything was fine between us, I thought our differences had already been settled. I'm sorry Goku, but your existence... No, the existence of Universe 7 means the end of Universe 6, that's why I need to finish you off. Hit replied in a somber tone. Goku then replied, you couldn't beat me before, why do you think you can do it now? I'm even stronger, don't underestimate me. Hit began to remember the clashes he had with Goku in the past.
It then replied, and what makes you think I'm the same as before? I heard about your current bad habits, really surprising. But now enough of this, let's end this once and for all. Goku then replied, well, I have no intention of killing you. But after defeating you, I will get the truth out of you and then I will find out why you are attacking us like this. Goku and Hit stared at each other as a cold wind blew that night on planet Sadawa, both of them heading into battle using their base forms. And Goku soon discovered that Hit was really different, his blows and his speed were even greater than before. Goku soon activated Super Saiyan Blue but Hit did not stop surprising Saiyan until Goku decided to use Super Saiyan Blue along with Kaioken. This was the way Goku defeated Hit in the past, but this time the fight was different. Hit was able to keep up with all of Goku's movements even though Saiyan was using that powerful transformation. You've become really powerful, Hit. Said Goku. Happy, Hit then replied, it's an honor to be praised by the man who defeated Jiren and Black Frieza. But how about we step it up a notch? Goku then replied, do you think you can keep up with Ultra Instinct? Hit then replied, show me what you've got, Goku. Goku then activated Ultra Instinct and now he was ready to engage his opponent, but something surprising happened. Hit activated a new form. Surprised, Goku said, incredible, it looks like Golden Frieza. Hit then replied, this is your end, Goku. Time skip. Time froze completely, and unlike every time Goku saw this ability being used, this time, Hit froze time for a whole minute. Goku was completely susceptible to Hit's attacks, who hit him several times. What's wrong Goku, you seem to be slower than usual. Hit said in a mocking tone. Damn, I won't be able to beat him like this, I'm losing too much energy, what's going on? Did I underestimate him? Did Hit become that powerful? Well, if that's the reality now, I have no other option, I'll use the Supreme Saiyan transformation. Goku said in thought. An orange flash emanated throughout that place, Goku finally transformed into Super Saiyan Orange. However, something unbelievable happened, even with all that power, Goku was trapped again by Hit's time skip. Hit then said, so this is the supreme form? Pathetic, it doesn't seem like you got very strong, on the contrary, you seem to be more tired. Well, this is your end, Goku of Universe 7. Hit was ready to finish Goku, but as if by some miracle, Whis, Shimpa and Vados appeared and prevented the worst from happening. Whis said, this fight ends here. It's time to reveal something important to you. Goku's transformation was undone, and Saiyan fell to the ground in disbelief at what was happening, he was weak and felt pain in his chest. Goku, like Vegeta and Broly, felt the effects of Frieza's poison. Planet Sadawa. After Daishinkan treated Goku and Kalifla's bodies, the father of all angels revealed to everyone his entire plan to purge Xenosama using the powerful Saiyans. His plan originally only counted on was help, but now that Frieza managed to mess things up, Daishinkan thought it was time for Vados, Shimpa, and Beerus to know the truth as well. All that truth was a shock to everyone, Hit felt used, but he understood that now was the time to cooperate. Daishinkan then said that now that the Saiyans of Universe 6 had started to evolve their powers, it was time for them to unite to prepare for the future, since the mission of saving all the universes was in the hands of Goku and Vegeta. Daishinkan also revealed that he would not be able to cure Goku, Broly and Vegeta definitively. Understanding his father's goals, Vados then reveals that he may know how Frieza could have found such a powerful poison to finish off the Saiyans once and for all. Vados then said, there was a poisonous planet, a planet that not even the Saiyans of Universe 6 had the courage to attack. After the emergence of Super Saiyan Goddess Kamoshi, Shimpa and I decided to send her on a mission to that planet under the pretext of saving planet Sadala. Shimpa said, exactly. Since we were afraid of the Saiyan's evolution and since a Saiyan capable of using Divine Ki had already been born in Beerus and Wiss Universe, Vados and I decided to put an end to Goddess Kamoshi. We were afraid that Xenosama would discover our actions and that's why we created the plan to make her go to that poisonous planet. The poisonous planet was close to Planet Frost, which is Frieza's counterpart in Universe 6. Sadly, Vados then said, Dad, if you had revealed your plans to us since that time, Kamoshi could have lived longer and we could have evolved the Saiyans of Universe 6 since that time. 
Daishinkan then replied, I couldn't have revealed it, because I was still gaining Zeno's trust, and little by little I was using my occlusion magic and it was at that moment that was realized my plans. That's why he acted differently from you, my daughter. But now we can act behind the scenes. Without understanding anything, Goku asked, Kamoshi? Wait a minute, in Universe 6, the Super Saiyan God is a woman? Vados replied, yes, see for yourself. Vados touched his index finger on Goku's forehead, this caused Saiyan to enter Vados' memories and then Goku came across everything that happened in the past. Goku saw how Kamoshi was a Saiyan adored for being kind and powerful, she was an incredible goddess. However, Goku also saw the despair of the young goddess when trying to fulfill the mission on the poisonous planet that had been imposed by Vados and Shimpa. When he came to, Goku was furious. Goku then said, what you did was a cowardly act. You let that woman perish alone. You sent her to her death. Daishinkan interrupted, saying, calm down, Goku. I know this is all painful, but remember our current objective. Goku then asked, and what is our current objective? Daishinkan replied, well, as you may have noticed, the poisonous planet that exists in Universe May 6th also exists in Universe 7. And if the poisonous planet was close to Frost's planet, that means that the planet we are looking for within Universe 7 is close to Frieza's planet. In other words, what I mean is that we are going to investigate this poisonous planet, who knows, maybe we will discover a way to cure this disease. Well, let's split into two teams, one will go to Frieza's planet and the poisonous planet in Universe 7 and the other team will go with me to Universe 0. Goku, you, Vegeta and Whis will come with me to Universe Zero while Broly and Beerus will investigate those two planets, of course, Broly must focus on Frieza's planet while Beerus invades the poisonous planet. Do you understand? Caulifla then asks, and us from Universe 6? Are we not going to do anything? We want to help too. Daishinkan then replied, just like the young warriors of Universe 7, you will be responsible for the balance of your respective universes. So you must stay out of this mission, but keep training with each other, because in the future you will defend your universes. Goku then said, Kalifla, keep getting stronger and stronger. Honor the name of the Saiyans, the name of Kamoshi and planet Sadala. You, Kale and Kaba can overcome us one day, I believe in you. And Hit, forgive me for not being in a better condition to give you a worthy fight. You have become extremely powerful, help the Saiyans of Universe 6. Goku says goodbye to Hit and Kalifla, while Whis brings Kale from Beerus' planet to Universe 6. Daishinkan's final plan begins to take effect. Universe 7, Frieza's Planet. After much investigation, Beerus found the plans that Frieza had created for the domination of the Universe Cosmos. Just like Vados and Shimpa, Frieza feared the evolutionary potential of the Saiyans, and that's why he wanted to eliminate them in the past. Beerus discovered that Frieza wanted the help of the angels and the gods of destruction of the universes that didn't participate in the Tournament of Power to defeat Xenosama and shape a new universe cosmos, but the angels and the gods rejected Frieza's offer, leaving him furious and so he went to attack Earth and try to destroy the Saiyans once and for all. Beerus began to feel guilty. After all, it was he who suggested to Frieza the idea of eliminating the Saiyans. Beerus then looked at Broly who was by his side helping with the investigation and said. Forgive me, I was an idiot. Broly then replied, I don't understand, what do you mean by that? Beerus then said, just accept my apologies. Well, now I'm going to the poison planet, I'm going to get a sample of that poison, you stay here and try to find out more things. Beerus then left for the poison planet while Broly continued to search Frieza's castle. Universe Zero Daishinkan, Whis, Goku and Vegeta finally arrive at the border between the Cosmo Universe, which is where the beginning of creation was, Universe Zero. There was a powerful seal that had been made on the outside by Daishinkan that only he could undo. After undoing the seal, everyone there entered a portal and once again teleportation was used but this time to go straight to the place where Whis's mother was. When they arrived at a small planet, Daishinkan took them to a castle that was the residence of the mother of all angels. Upon entering that castle, a beautiful female voice welcomed them. You finally came to me, you traitorous worm, said the mother of angels. Mead, my dear. 
I can explain. Daishinkan replied. Mi then said, explain? You should have stayed by my side and tried to face Zeno together with me and Falker, but no, your plan was to simply leave us trapped here for millennia while you found a way to finish Zeno. Is that what you came to explain? If that's what it is, I already know, now answer me, did you finish that insane little god once and for all? Daishinkan then replied, well, not yet, and to make matters worse, now there are two of them and… Two? Now there are two Zenus? Tell me, how do you plan to defeat them now? What's your plan? We were supposed to finish them together when we had the chance, now it's impossible, the mother of all angels replied furiously. Daishinkan then said, not even back then did we have a chance. Zeno was too powerful, but now he's weaker. The power of creation that he used to expand the Cosmo Universe and create micro-universes weakened him and, even unintentionally, his powers were fragmented and Zeno's evolutionary capacity was passed on to another specific race, the Saiyans. I brought two of them with me, the most powerful, but they are sick. They need a cure. Can you help them? Mead then replied, Saiyans? To me they are just two insignificant creatures, what can they do against Zeno? Was that your plan, Daishinkan? Show her! Wis said, interrupting his mother. Goku and Vegeta began to raise their power to the peak. The small planet trembled but none of that surprised the mother of the angels until Goku and Vegeta activated the Supreme Transformation. Goku and Vegeta then fuse and transform into Supreme Gogeta, his power is overwhelming. Wis said, see. Mom, this power already surpasses the power of a god of destruction and I would say that it will soon surpass the power of the angels. Surprised, Mead then replied, that's incredible. How did you get the divine key? How can you be so powerful? Who are you? Wis then replied, they are the key to our victory, they are the Saiyans. The maximum power of Goku and Vegeta fused surprised the mother of all angels, but soon their transformation was undone because they didn't want the disease to affect them again. Mead then said, well, maybe it's possible. But now that there are two of that idiot planet destroying brat, maybe we won't get out of this mission alive. And there are still those guards who are very powerful. Daishinkan then said, you and I will face one of the Zenus, Goku and Vegeta with the help of Broly will face the Prime Zeno while the angels and the gods will defeat the guards. What do you think of that? Mead then replied, well, I can't cure them of this disease. I see that you also tried but failed but what I can do is make them even stronger. I find this interesting, but first I want to test the power of these two Saiyans. Said an imposing and mysterious voice. Daishinkan then said, Falker, is that you? The primordial god of destruction appeared, the most powerful of all the gods of destruction wants to face Goku and Vegeta to find out how powerful they are. Universe Zero. Falker looked at the two Saiyans and saw great potential in them, but the God of Destruction of Universe Zero did not believe that those two would be able to defeat Zeno once and for all. However, Vegeta brought up an intriguing question that left everyone apprehensive. Vegeta said, All right, if you want to test us, then so be it. However, there is something I would like to know about everything that is happening. What will be the fate of all the universes after the end of this mission? Understanding his friend's desires, Goku also asked, Vegeta is right. I am ready to help, but I want to know what your plans are for all the other people. Who can guarantee that you will not become the next gods who will dominate and annihilate us whenever you want? Explain to us what happened in the past. Falker then replied, just because I am the god of destruction does not mean that I go around destroying everything. In fact, this position was created only to avoid conflicts and not to create them. Mead then said, Exactly. Before Zeno and Zalama appeared in this Cosmo universe, Falker, my husband and I only wanted to maintain balance in this universe. And everything was going very well. Our children were happy. The people of each planet were at peace. But Zeno and Zalama ended our dreams. Zalama wanted to maintain a single universe, but with few planets, and he wanted each of my children to be a leader of each of these planets, Daishinkan and I had 16 children. Zeno, on the other hand, wanted there to be more universes, 18 in total, and in this way each of my children would be the angel of one of these universes and there would be gods of destruction for each angel, and within these universes there would be a hierarchy among the Kai. 
Here in the primordial universe that you now know as Universe Zero, there are no Kai, nor Hakations. All of this was Zeno's creation. And as you may have noticed, currently there are only 12 universes in the Cosmo universe created by Zeno, but previously there were 18 universes. In an act of courage, six of my children rebelled against Zeno but were eliminated. For this reason, I could no longer bear the situation. That's why I acted against Zeno, but Daishinkin stopped me. Daishinkin then replied, and that's why you're alive, my dear. I had to do it. That's why I chose to help Zeno, because that would divide his power and now we have a chance to win. Goku then asked, wait a minute, I thought angels couldn't be erased. Daishinkin then replied, them surviving was just another one of my tricks to manipulate Zeno. I promised him that I would banish all my children who were eliminated to Universe Zero, but since Android 17 saved everyone, I didn't need to send them here. Whis then said, now I understand. Mom, Dad, you were amazing. I can't imagine the pain you had to endure for so long. Vegeta then replied, all right, we'll help you. Falker listened attentively to the entire conversation, and he understood how necessary it was for Zeno to finally be defeated. Falker then asked, very interesting, this entire conversation has made me even more excited to discover the true potential that you two possess, so let's do it once and for all. I want you to use all the power you have at once, I won't dodge, I'll counterattack with everything I have. Are you ready? Goku and Vegeta then replied, yes, we are ready. Goku and Vegeta then activated the Supreme Transformation and fused into Supreme Gogeta, who immediately fired a final Kamehameha in Falker's direction. The God of Destruction prepared himself and used a Hakai with maximum potential. Both powers collided in the sky. And to Falker's surprise, Gogeta was winning the energy dispute against him. However, the fusion was undone and Goku and Vegeta were exhausted, feeling extreme pain in their bodies. Falker then said, Incredible. They could have defeated me, I am the most powerful god of destruction of all. You have proven your worth, but I believe that with this illness you will not be able to defeat Zeno. Everything seemed lost, the frustration was very great but as a spark of hope, Beerus contacted Wiz from Bulma's house and revealed everything about the poison. There was no cure, but Vegeta's wife discovered that the poison only worked fully on legitimate Saiyans because of their Zenkai which is the ability that makes Saiyans always evolve. The mixed Saiyans develop their own type of Zenkai, in other words, as strange as it seemed, the human antibodies prevented the disease created by Frieza from affecting them. However, Goku, Vegeta and Broly didn't have to worry, because the Dragon Balls would be used to bring them back. Mead then said, well, we have no alternatives, we'll have to try to fulfill our mission no matter what. Goku, Vegeta, come to me. I'll unlock the full potential of Zenkai within you. I'll regenerate your strength and health. The disease will disappear for a while but will soon return, so we have to use time to our advantage. But in this way you became even stronger than you were before. Goku and Vegeta approached the mother of all angels and were healed at the same time that Zenkai was activated in their bodies at a maximum level. Mead said, the final fight is approaching, let's bring everyone here, the fight will be here because a fight of this magnitude can destroy the entire Cosmo universe. Daishinkin then said, I'm going to summon the Zenus here, the guards will come along. Whis, get ready to bring the gods, the angels, and Broly. Are you ready? Goku, Whis, and Vegeta answer, yes. The final fight is approaching. What will be the result of this divine clash? The battle was about to begin, Daishinkin was ready to bring everyone, allies and enemies alike, to Universe Zero. However, Wiss was still worried about some details about Zeno. Wiss then asked, Wait a minute, Dad. Zeno is very powerful, and there are two of them, I understand that here they are further away from the universe created by them and will soon become even weaker, but isn't it still dangerous? And if they simply decide to destroy Universe Zero, we will all be eliminated, so how do you intend to deal with the maximum destruction power of universes that the Zenus possess? Daishinkin then answers, that's very simple, my son. They can't destroy Universe Zero. Daishinkin's answer shocked Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta asked, what do you mean? I saw Zeno destroy Future Trunks reality very easily. So why couldn't he destroy Universe Zero too? Confident, Daishinkin then replied, when Zeno destroyed that alternate reality, 
only the Zeno of that reality survived, because a Zeno cannot kill himself. In other words, he replicated himself even in alternate realities. Of course, this was not a plan he had in mind, it only happened after the rupture of the creation of the new Cosmo Universe from Universe Zero. In other words, the power to decimate a reality or an entire universe that Zeno possesses only works in realities or Cosmo Universes in which he possesses some fragment of his power or of himself. Mead then said, that is why we are going to bring them here. Zeno cannot destroy Universe Zero because he was not the creator of this universe. Daishinkin then said, exactly, my dear wife. Here we are going to separate into quadrants, each team will face their enemy in one of these quadrants, in this way we will further reduce their effectiveness, whether in numbers or in power. My wife and I will face future Zeno in the north quadrant, Broly, Goku and Vegeta will face main Zeno in the south quadrant, while Falker will lead the gods of destruction to face the guards in the west quadrant. One thing I didn't explain before, but I'll say it now, Wiss, you and your brothers will take care of the master planet and the people who live here. There are four planets here in Universe Zero, but the only one that is populated is the master planet where we are, which is in the east quadrant. In other words, you must protect the master planet from the shockwaves of battles or surprise attacks. Wiss replied, okay, I understand everything now. We're ready. Daishinkin began to summon everyone to Universe Zero, but because the distance and time were different for each location, Daishinkin had to calculate how long each teleportation would take. In this way, the angels were summoned first to take up their posts, after which Daishinkin summoned the two Zenus who came with the guards as always. And so, both Zenus and the guards finally appeared on the master planet of Universe Zero. Prime Zeno-sama then said, What is happening? Why did you summon us to this place, Daishinkin? Furious, Mead said, to end you once and for all. Future Zeno-sama then said, And us? You have no idea what we can do, don't you? Daishinkin began to remember the absurd games that both Zenus played with the planets. Daishinkin then said, then try it. Here you have no power whatsoever. At that moment, both Zenus raised their hands to erase Universe Zero, but nothing happened, which made them both furious. Furious, Prime Zenosama asked, what is this? What did you do? Daishinkin then replied, I didn't do anything, you did it yourselves. And now get ready because the end has come for you. Goku and Vegeta who were just watching everything, simply disappeared before everyone's eyes. Soon after, Prime Zeno also disappeared. The guards were confused, as they could not track their masters in that universe until they also disappeared and found themselves in a strange place before Falker and all the gods of destruction. Now it's our turn, Daishinkin said. Just like the others, future Zeno disappeared from Planet Master along with Daishinkin and his wife. At that moment, each team was ready to face their respective opponents in the resigned quadrants. South Quadrant Goku and Vegeta waited until Prime Zeno appeared, and it didn't take long for that to happen. Furious, Prime Zeno-sama said, You traitor. I thought you were my friend, Goku. Do you really think you can beat me? Goku then replied, I confess that I am very merciful, I have had many enemies throughout my life. And thanks to you, we are alive today, after all, we are part of your creation. However, just because you are a god or something like that doesn't give you the right to play with people's lives. You should take care of them, protect them, and that's why you must perish. Damn you! I'm going to end you! Zeno said, charging towards Goku and Vegeta. However, like a green ray, Broly appears from the sky and hits Zeno with a powerful punch, throwing him to the ground, opening a huge crater. Vegeta then said, you've finally arrived, Broly. Broly then replied, 
This will be our last fight, so let's not take it easy. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly transform and use their most powerful form to face Zeno, who stood up and aimed a piercing look of fury at the three Saiyans. Finally, the most epic battle of all has begun. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly were perplexed to see Zeno like that. Zeno had finally revealed his true form, his true nature, his true power. His body was like the cosmos universe itself. The aura that Zeno emanated was as if the energy of all the galaxies, black holes and everything that exists in the universe were united in a single micropoint. It really was a divine power in all its splendor. Zeno says, do you think you are the only ones who can transform? In fact, it is thanks to my ability to evolve and transform that you Saiyans and other races can do it too. All of you are ungrateful. You are only alive because of my will and now you turn against me? Maybe Zalama was right on this point, he shouldn't have created so many unworthy beings. I must put an end to this. Broly replied, I didn't understand a word that guy just said, but your power is astonishing. If you have a plan, well, you better use it now. Let's use fusion. Goku and Vegeta answered at the same time. Broly then asked, Fusion? Wait a minute. Broly began to remember the fight he had against Goku and Vegeta when they first met. At that time, Broly was still under the control of his father who was plotting alongside Frieza. Broly said, that was amazing. I don't know if it will work against this guy, but I'm here to help. Goku then replied, please Broly, buy us some time. Meanwhile, in the other quadrants, the gods of destruction were having a great advantage and one of Zeno's guards had already succumbed. In the fight between Daishinkin and Mead against future Zeno, things were more difficult, but Mead was willing to lose her own life if it would result in victory against Zeno. Returning to the main fight, Broly agreed to buy time so that the fusion could be completed while Vegeta had an interesting question to ask. Vegeta then asked, wouldn't it have been better to have gotten new pot era earrings? Happy, Goku replied, I'm glad you changed your mind about fusing with me over time, Vegeta. However, now that we're at our maximum potential unlocked, I don't believe that the pot era fusion would make that much of a difference. And in the end, we're going to perish at the end of this fight, so we shouldn't worry about it. Vegeta gave Goku a look of admiration in a way that he had only done in the battle against Majin Buu. Vegeta once again realized that his greatest rival and also his best friend was a person who was always motivated to do his best, even if the chances of victory were low. You guys are pathetic, do you really think I'm going to allow something like that? I feel like you've changed, you're so powerful that you could become a problem for me. That woman did something to you, didn't she? Well, it's time for you to go back to being what you were before. Nothing. Zeno said furiously. Zeno then charged towards the three Saiyans, but Broly took the lead and went towards Zeno. The clash between the two made the heavens tremble. Broly said, this is the technique I learned from Gohan. Masenko. Broly attacked Zeno with the same technique he learned in training with Gohan, a technique that Goku's son had learned from Piccolo many years ago. A powerful blast of green energy was launched towards Zeno, who countered it with an equally powerful blast of energy, resulting in a great explosion. You bastard, can't you see that you're just delaying the inevitable, why don't you just get out of my way? Zeno shouted furiously. Broly then replied, as a Saiyan warrior, I have to protect my friends. Zeno then replied, then as a Saiyan warrior, you will die with your friends. Galaxy Extinction Zeno uses his most powerful attack, which hits Broly at such an absurd speed that Saiyan had no way to dodge or fight back. Broly is finally defeated. Zeno then says, amazing, he's so resilient that he didn't die from my attack. But it doesn't matter, he's out of the game. Now it's time to deal with those two idiots. As Broly fell to the ground practically unconscious, his last words before hitting the ground were, I leave the rest to you, my friends, my Saiyan brothers. Now it's your turn, get ready. Zeno said furiously. 
However, when he looked up, an orange glow filled the night sky of that planet. Finally the fusion was ready, and the all-powerful warrior Gogeta appeared. Damn, too late. They did it. Zeno shouted. The fusion between Supreme Goku and Supreme Vegeta has finally happened. This time, with his maximum potential unleashed, Ultra Supreme Gogeta finally emerges, the most powerful fusion of all time. All the battles are at their peak, the end is approaching, what will be the result of this conflict? Gogeta and Zeno stare at each other, both were ready to take each other's lives. Until finally the fight begins. In that dark, starry sky, the battle between Gogeta and Zeno explodes with an intensity that transcends comprehension. The two combatants move at such absurd speeds that only flashes and impacts resound in the silent night. Each blow struck echoes like distant thunder, and can be heard in all the other quadrants. The tension grows, as both know that this physical confrontation is only the prelude to something much greater. The fight reaches its climax as both combatants retreat into the air, preparing their ultimate techniques. Gogeta gathers all his ki into a final Kamehameha. On the other side, Zeno stretches his hands forward and invokes his devastating technique, Divine Punishment. A glowing sphere of divine energy forms in his hands, pulsating with the power of millions of universes. As the two attacks are launched, time seems to stop. The two blasts collide in the center of the sky, and the impact creates an unimaginable shockwave. For a brief moment, the light from the explosion rivals that of a big bang, blotting out the brightness of the nearest stars. The energy generated distorts the space around them, creating dimensional rifts. When the light finally dissipates, Gogeta and Zeno remain floating, but unharmed. The fight ceased, not due to a lack of strength, but due to a silent understanding between the two, both had surpassed the limit of the impossible by having reached the peak of the power of an existence. Zeno then said, It's incredible how powerful you are, how could I have been so naive? How could I not have realized that little worms were becoming lions right under my feet? Gogeta then replied, Well, maybe that arrogance was passed on to us, the Saiyans. We suffered from that arrogance and hubris because we thought we were invincible, but as time went by we changed, after all, today we know that there is nothing and no one that cannot be defeated in the Cosmo Universe. But know that it was Daishinkan, he had all the truth from you by placing you inside a barrier that prevented you from seeing and feeling with precision everything that happened in the twelve universes. Your castle was your own trap, time passes differently in that place, that way you would never be able to follow the evolution of all the people. In other words, Daishinkan confirmed what he had always wanted since you annihilated his children. You are not omnipresent and omnipotent. You are defeatable. You are mortal. Zeno was furious with the words spoken by Gogeta. As much as Saiyan was right, that was the greatest affront Zeno had suffered in his entire life, those words hit him harder than the children of Daishinkan and Mead in the angelic rebellion that occurred millennia ago. Damn you, so you discover the truth? And what does that change? Even if you defeat me, even if you take my life, this will never end. Do you know why? I tried to create a strong and powerful Cosmo Universe, but you want to end it. Zeno said furiously. Confused, Gogeta then asked, What are you talking about? Have you gone crazy? Zeno then replied, Do you think that there is only the Cosmo Universe that I created? Do you believe that Salama and I came from the same place? Wake up! There are things and beings out there that are more powerful and frightening than me or Salama. We arrived in the universe of Daishinkan and Mead by luck. You are not prepared to face what exists beyond this universe and the Cosmo universe created by me. And does that give you the right to annihilate whoever you want for pure pleasure? You played with the lives of many people, even though they were created by you. Gogeta said. Zeno then replied. I wanted to create strong people, and that weakened me. That is why I was looking for a solution to this dilemma, but I never found it. I wanted to create independent beings, but unfortunately that will never happen because I am always connected to everything I created. Gogeta then replied, Well, there is a form of this connection that exists between everyone in the cosmos universe and you cease to exist. Either we cease to exist or you cease to exist. Zeno then replied, Exactly. Suddenly Zeno felt even more powerful and Gogeta could feel the increase in so much energy. Gogeta then said, It seems that Daishinkan and Mead did it. They defeated the other Zeno despite no longer feeling the divine key of Daishinkan's wife. 
and I believe that Felker and the Gods of Destruction also defeated the guards, everyone seems to be fine. In other words, now I am more powerful and the mother of all angels is gone forever. That means this is the end. You can no longer defeat me. Replied Zeno with a tone of superiority. Gogeta then said, again all that arrogance, all that arrogance. The mother of all angels is not gone, she is with me. At that moment, Mead's spirit appeared in Gogeta's mind, she then explained that she did this by giving part of her power to Goku and Vegeta the moment she recovered both of their strength and unlocked their full potential. She also revealed that she knew that in order to defeat Zeno once and for all, both versions of him had to be defeated, but future Zeno had to die first, which is why Mead sacrificed herself. Now that his spirit had awakened in Gogeta's body, it was time to finish Prime Zeno once and for all. His spirit would disappear once Goku and Vegeta broke the fusion. Goku and Vegeta then thanked Mead for the trust she had placed in them. Gogeta then said, the time has come to put an end to all this injustice once and for all. Get ready, Zeno, it's your end. Zeno then replied, pathetic. How do you intend to do that now that I'm even more powerful? Gogeta charged up all his energy, put his hands together, and exclaimed. With that, Ultra Final Kamehameha. Ultra Gogeta's energy blast was overwhelming. Zeno could feel Mead's power in that attack, and Zeno was paralyzed. He understood that nothing he could do would change the fate of that attack. It was finally the end of Zeno. Forever. Universe Zero, South Quadrant. The final battle has finally ended, and while all the gods of destruction, angels, and the Grand Priest were absent on the small planet in the Southern Quadrant, exhausted and facing death, Goku, Vegeta, and Broly talked about how their end was near, but that their mission had been accomplished. The poison continued to torment the bodies of the three Saiyans, but despite this, they were all happy. Goku then mentioned that they could meet in the other world to follow Snake Way and reach King Kai's planet to train together. He also said that he trusted Gohan and the others to protect Earth. Broly agreed and soon passed away. Vegeta also thought it was a good idea, and like Broly, Vegeta died. At that moment, all the gods, angels, along with the Grand Priest, arrived in the Southern Quadrant. Goku then said, Forgive me, Whis, angels, and Daishinkin, we couldn't save Mead. But it was her strength that allowed us to defeat Zeno. Whis then replied, It's alright, we will revive you soon. Goku then responded, No, it's fine. The rest of us decided to follow this path. Let's leave everything in the hands of the new generation. Tell Gohan, Goten, and Piccolo to train everyone, including the girls and the young man who is the reincarnation of Boo. But don't mention what happened with Zeno. Only the Saiyans from Universe 6, Hit, and Bulma know what's going on. I don't want them to worry about it now, I just want them to train and get stronger. Vados then replied, leave it to me, I will erase this memory from the warriors of my universe. Whis then said, I will do the same. Daishinkin then said, I am the one who should apologize, Goku. But I promise I will investigate everything that happened, and I will even journey through other cosmic universes to find out what dangers await us. As soon as I finish, I promise to help you in your training. For now, as the new king of all, I promise that all pointless battles between the twelve universes end here. The Xeno Palace will no longer exist. Now Universe Zero and the Master Planet will be the center of the twelve universes. Goku then replied, that's a good idea. Thank you, my friends. Goku finally closed his eyes and departed for the other world to meet with Broly and Vegeta. After some time, the three Saiyans met on King Kai's planet to train, while on Earth, the new generation continued the legacy of their predecessors.
Our story begins after the epic fight between Goku, Vegeta, and Broly against Black Frieza. This deadly clash cost a very high price for the Saiyans who gave their lives to save the Earth and the universe once again. Before leaving, Goku asked Gohan and Piccolo to prepare the new generation of Saiyan warriors who would protect the Earth in the future. Sadly, Gohan told his father that they would revive him along with Vegeta and Broly in the near future. However, satisfied and with a sense of duty fulfilled, Goku, Vegeta and Broly decided that reviving them was not necessary, at least if it was guaranteed that Gohan and the others would not be able to defend the Earth. Goku reminded his son that if he needed help, in a faraway country there was a boy with a very high latent potential. But now, the Earth was under the responsibility of the new generation of Saiyans. Following his father's orders, Gohan vowed that he and Piccolo would become the masters who would pave the way for the new generation of warriors who would protect the Earth. Six months later, on a beautiful Saturday morning, Gohan was at home working on yet another of his academic studies until he was surprised by Piccolo who came looking for him to remind him of his responsibility to train the new warriors. Piccolo mentioned that Trunks and Goten were not ready yet and that their childish mentalities needed to be challenged so that they would take on the responsibility of the role they would play in the near future. Gohan said, Calm down Piccolo-san, I know I have to help prepare the young ones, but Goten needs to finish his last year of school while Trunks has taken on some responsibilities at Capsule Corporation now that Vegeta is no longer there. He has even helped take care of his little sister. Piccolo replied, I understand that they should live their lives and enjoy their youth, but if a very powerful enemy appears, we will have problems. So you should train Goten and Trunks while I finish training your daughter, Little Pan. She has shown an absurd evolution. She reached the level of Super Saiyan very early early, it was incredible, and in less than a month she was already reaching the level of Super Saiyan 2 and in the last training she almost reached Super Saiyan God for the first time. Surprised, Gohan asked, Super Saiyan God? That's incredible, not even I achieved that transformation. Gohan began to remember the time Goten showed him that he was also capable of transforming into Super Saiyan. Piccolo then said, exactly, Super Saiyan God, she can be even stronger than you in the future, Gohan, I remember that Goku achieved that transformation after receiving the key of five Saiyans at the same time while Vegeta trained directly with Whis to master that divine form, Gohan replied, indeed, Pan must be different, this girl can really surpass me, okay, I'm going to finish my academic papers and go train Goten and Trunks, Piccolo said, now you're acting like a true warrior, okay, I'm going to take Pan with me to training, we'll only come back when she reaches Super Saiyan God. Piccolo then flew off with Gohan's daughter to the training site. When they arrived at the training site, Piccolo told the little girl that the training would be much more severe and difficult this time. Pan replied, Okay, Piccolo-san, I'll do my best. Piccolo said, I can see that your spirit is on fire, little girl. This time, you must reach Super Saiyan God. But tell me, in the last training session you almost reached a new power. What did you feel? Pensive. Pan replied, Well, when I was increasing all my ki to the maximum, I felt a different power but I couldn't control it. It was a power equal to ki, but at the same time it was different from conventional ki. When I felt this other ki emerging inside me I was scared because it was much stronger than my normal ki. Piccolo began to think about the little girl's words. He began to walk back and forth thinking about how to solve this problem until an idea came to his mind. Piccolo then said, Okay, Pan, raise your key to the maximum again, but this time don't be afraid of the different key that will emerge inside you. This time don't try to switch from one key to another key, instead try to mix them inside yourself. Smiling, Pan replied, Okay Piccolo-san, I'll do what you asked. Piccolo watched as Pan began to increase her key in the same way as before, however, this time the girl didn't transform into Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan 2, her key was increasing uncontrollably and an absurd heat was emanating from the girl's small body. For a moment, Piccolo thought that Gohan's daughter was achieving the same powers as Gohan in the mystic form, since the color of the key that emanated from the girl's body was completely white, as if it were a conventional key but much more powerful. While this was happening, on the other side of the country, Gohan 
Gohan felt his daughter's key. Gohan was completely scared, but also proud, which made him fly as fast as possible to the training site. On the training field, Piccolo was perplexed by what he was witnessing. Piccolo said, Now you are on the right path, little girl, I have no more doubts. If you want, you can surpass your father's powers in the future. Pan continued to increase her powers until her hair began to change color, starting to turn red. At that moment, Piccolo understood that it was not the same ultimate form as Gohan that Pan was achieving, it was Super Saiyan God. Gohan had finally arrived. His gaze was filled with admiration for his daughter. Piccolo said, Look Gohan, your daughter is doing it. She's going to reach Super Saiyan God. Pan then replied, No, no, I can go further, I can. No, I'm going to be stronger than Daddy. A burst of red key spread throughout the place, leaving everything around in a reddish tone until that color tone changed and a blue hue took over the entire environment. Surprised, Gohan then said, This is incredible. I'm really going to be left behind if I don't do anything. Incredulous, Piccolo also said, It's not possible. She went further. This is Super Saiyan Blue. Pan achieved a transformation that not even Gohan had achieved and went further. For her it wasn't enough to master Super Saiyan God. The little girl also mastered Super Saiyan Blue and surprised her master Piccolo and her father Gohan. Eight years later, after the arduous training with Piccolo, even though she was still very young, Pan had become a very powerful girl. Her mastery of Super Saiyan Blue was formidable considering her young age. Pan was undoubtedly a prodigy. But since the Earth was still at peace, she began attending school like all the other children her age. During this time, Goten graduated and also became more mature. He decided to follow in his father's footsteps by taking on the responsibility of training with young Ope. Feeling a sense of duty fulfilled, Piccolo decided to retire from fighting for good, as the Namekians saw no further need to participate in battles. As for Trunks, in addition to gaining a lot of maturity by taking care of his sister Bulla to help his mother, Vegeta's eldest son had become much more powerful. Furthermore, Trunks was in a relationship with Mai and had also taken on the responsibility of training his little sister, who, like Pan, was already showing signs of being a very powerful girl. One fine day, Trunks woke up determined to train his little sister. It was time to prepare her to protect the Earth in the future, just as Piccolo had prepared young Pan for the same goal. Trunks could already imagine what the future would be like with both girls as the protectors of the world. Trunks said, All right, little sis, it's time for you to learn how to be a true warrior. Bulla replied, Okay, big bro. Trunks then began explaining all the fundamentals of the Saiyan transformations. He even taught her about the art of sword fighting and how he developed over the years. Of course, he mentioned his encounter with future Trunks and how it helped him a lot since his future version gave him many important tips that were a secret between the two of them. Trunks then mentioned a secret and very powerful technique, the Sword of Hope which was like a spirit bomb in the form of a sword. To use this special technique, Bulla would have to learn Super Saiyan Rage, but that would be difficult, as in Trunks' view, his sister still needed to reach one level at a time. However, Trunks was surprised when he asked his sister to raise her key. Quickly, a blue aura began to emanate from the little girl. Trunks started to remember himself and Goten, who were considered prodigies. Trunks recalled his father's words during training when he was still a child. Vegeta had been surprised when he saw that Trunks had managed to transform into Super Saiyan, and now Trunks was amazed to see his little sister emanating divine key. Then Trunks remembered that Pan had already reached this level of power too. To him, it was incredible how these girls were already at a higher level than he and Goten had achieved at the same age. Trunks began to get emotional, remembering that Bulla was no longer a baby and that his father, Vegeta, was no longer by their side. This made Trunks' mind drift back to when his family was complete. Seeing her older brother cry, Bulla tried to comfort him. Bulla said, Calm down, brother, you don't need to be sad. I know it's been tough without dad here, but I'm very happy because I have you, mom, and my. I have my friends from school, and I'm also a Saiyan, so I want to help protect the earth in the future. I want to be the most powerful Saiyan woman that has ever existed. Bulla's words strongly touched Trunks' heart, who was now more motivated to teach the girl to reach her dream. Emotionally, Trunks said, All right, Bulla, I'm going to pass on my powers to you so that you can reach a completely new level of power. Are you ready? Bulla replied, Yes, 
I am, big bro. Trunks then transferred all his ki and spiritual energy to his sister, who was already emanating divine ki, and like a miracle, the girl reached Super Saiyan rage. Trunks was impressed, but at the same time, he knew this was possible. Just like Gohan's daughter, Bulla was a special girl and had everything it took to be a formidable warrior in the near future. Trunks said, it's amazing how things have evolved. People used to say Goten and I were formidable, but I see that you and Pan are even more incredible. But just as Goten hasn't stopped and continues to train, I won't stop here either. It's time to reunite with my master just as my future version told me. It's time to surprise Gohan and surpass him. Bulla, keep training, challenge Pan to friendly fights. You both will become training partners from now on, and you both will be the most powerful Saiyan women. I believe in you too. After saying these beautiful words, Trunks leaves for Gohan's house to finally begin his ultimate training with the one who is now considered the strongest warrior in the world. A silent afternoon in the mountains, where the wind blows gently through the trees. Trunks, now an experienced adult warrior, carries the weight of past battles and the desire to become even stronger. He has been invited to train with his master, Gohan, the most powerful warrior on earth. Trunks arrives at the agreed location, a plain surrounded by mountains and crystal clear rivers. He finds Gohan waiting for him, wearing his classic orange and blue uniform. Gohan, with a calm smile, reveals a long, sharp sword, surprising Trunks. I also learned how to fight with swords, says Gohan as he holds the weapon with skill. Trunks, initially surprised, recalls the stories about the Z-sword and realizes that he underestimated his master's abilities. The two take their positions, and the atmosphere around them seems to hold its breath in anticipation. Trunks, with his sword in hand, strikes first, delivering quick and precise blows. Gohan, however, demonstrates refined technique and immense strength, blocking and countering with movements that show years of practice. Trunks realizes that Gohan is not just defending himself, but also testing his own skills, forcing him to innovate and think beyond the obvious. The battle intensifies, with the sound of swords echoing through the mountains. In a swift move, Gohan disarms Trunks and points the blade at his chest. With a serious look, he says, Never underestimate your opponent, even if they are your master. Trunks, panting, acknowledges the advice and understands that true strength goes beyond what he had imagined. After a brief rest, the two warriors rise, ready for the next phase of training. Trunks activates his Super Saiyan Rage transformation, a form that glows with a bluish-golden aura, while his eyes reflect the intensity of his power and rage. Gohan, in turn, closes his eyes and unleashes his mystic transformation, also known as Gohan Ultimate. His appearance doesn't change drastically, but the power emanating from him is overwhelming, a perfect combination of raw strength and absolute control. The ground trembles beneath their feet as they face each other, and in the blink of an eye, they launch into combat. Trunks attacks with fury, using the enhanced speed and strength of the Super Saiyan Rage. His strikes are powerful, each punch charged with energy, but Gohan responds with impeccable defense and counter-attacks that demonstrate his superior technique. The battlefield is filled with shockwaves and energy explosions as the two engage in a duel of titans. Trunks, realizing the advantage he is gaining, intensifies his attacks. Each strike is now faster, stronger, as if the determination and pride to surpass his master are fueling every move. Gohan, though powerful in his mystic form, begins to feel the pressure. Trunks' strikes are precise, almost wild, and for a moment, it seems like the young warrior might actually win. Gohan, however, remains calm, analyzing Trunks' every move with a sharp mind. When Trunks delivers a final blow with all his might, Gohan, with a fierce gleam in his eyes, releases a power that had been hidden. In an explosion of intense and wild energy, Gohan activates his beast transformation. His hair turns silver, his eyes shine with primal fury, and his aura displays an overwhelming purple hue. The transformation instantly overwhelms Trunks, who is thrown back by the sheer impact of Gohan's power. Gohan's aura is crushing, and for a moment, Trunks feels as if he's facing an indomitable beast. Gohan charges with unmatched speed and power, taking Trunks down effortlessly, despite the warrior's attempts to resist. The battle becomes one-sided, with Gohan demonstrating how far Trunks still has to go to reach his true potential. After the battle, Trunks recovers, panting and still impressed by his master's power. Gohan approaches, his demeanor now serene and understanding. 
You have great power within you, Trunks, but you're still letting anger control your actions. To reach a new level, you need to learn how to master that power and release it in the right way. With these words, Gohan begins to teach Trunks about the mystic transformation, a form that doesn't rely on anger or the Super Saiyan transformation, but on the warrior's dormant maximum potential. Gohan explains that to achieve this form, Trunks must first learn to control his emotions, access the depths of his being, and release his true power without using traditional transformations. The training is arduous, with Trunks facing not only physical challenges but also a deep inner examination. He learns to channel his energy in a balanced way, without letting his emotions dominate him. Over time, Trunks begins to feel the change. His power becomes more refined, more controlled, and he realizes that his strength doesn't just come from rage, but from a profound understanding of himself and his potential. Eventually, he manages to reach the mystic form, his aura glowing with a bright and intense light, different from any other transformation he has achieved before. But the training doesn't stop there. Gohan then challenges him to combine this new form with the destructive power of the rage form, creating a unique transformation. Determined, Trunks begins to experiment, trying to blend the calm and control of the mystic form with the fury and intensity of the rage form. After several attempts, he finally succeeds. His new transformation, which he names Mystic Rage, is a perfect fusion of raw power and maximum potential. His aura is a combination of blue, gold, and white, with an intensity that rivals even Gohan's beast form. Seeing his student's progress, Gohan smiles with pride. You did it, Trunks. Now, with this new form, you can continue to grow and, who knows, one day reach the power that I too had to awaken. Happy, Trunks replied, thank you, master. Trunks, with a determined and firm look, thanks his master, knowing that this journey is just the beginning of something even greater. What new enemies will arise now that Goku, Vegeta, and Broly are no longer on Earth? Will the new generation of warriors be strong enough to protect the universe? Well, we'll see that in the next season of Dragon Ball Ultra. Thank you.